welcome along to our Creative Journaling Masterclass, um, where we're going to introduce and demonstrate how to make a creative journal or a journal of care. Um, so before I get started on talking about um, sort of what makes a journal and doing some demonstrations, I just wanted to introduce the idea of creative journal and sort of the concept of journal and what it is. Um, it's a really, um, it's a lovely project that's really creative, it's accessible to everybody, um, it's about making a book for yourself, it's a safe space to really um, explore and create and play with materials. It's something that doesn't have to be shared by anyone but yourselves, um, so it's a really lovely place to sort of find your own creative voice. Um, and let things like um, thoughts and feelings and images kind of spill over. Um, it really is just for you it's, and each journal is unique to the person who creates it as well so there really isn't a sort of a right or wrong way to make a journal as well. So what is a creative journal? I always think a creative journal is somewhere between um, a sketchbook and a diary. So usually you might find that some pages you might explore imagery, some pages you might explore text. More often than not a lot of pages will explore a little bit of both and it's kind of like a process of layering. Um, there's lots of little bits that build up a really interesting journal page. But again, as I said before, there's no right or wrong way to create a journal page. Um, and it's all about kind of finding your feet and finding your voice as you work through each page at a time. You can use a lot of materials from around the home. So don't feel like you need um, you know, a, a huge art supply or stash of materials just to get started. When I use simple things like a household tub of emulsion, which I just decant into a little plastic cup. So I always have, it, it's rather messy, but it's well used. I always have some emulsion nearby. If you have things like glue and scissors, something to add colour. So this could be paints, or it could even be something like food colouring from the kitchen cupboard. Anything that can add colour to your journal. Um, and something to add text as well. So if you've just got some felt-tip pens around, a Sharpie, maybe some alphabet stamps, but just things that you can find around the home. If you need to use cardboard in any of your um, journal projects, you can use things like cereal boxes as well. So it really can be very, very accessible and you don't need lots of specialist art equipment to get started. As well as having all your materials to hand, it's nice to have a little place that you can go to the journal because you might find that you collect some materials, you collect lots of papers to work with. It's lovely if you've got a little space that you can go to um, to journal. Maybe it might be a corner of a room, it might be a little, uh, an actual room itself, but it's lovely to have a little room to sort of retreat to, make a cup of tea, and take yourself away for a little bit of me time. Um, and to get started, you'll need a book to work in. Now this could be um, a shop bought sketchbook. It could be something like an old reading book. I've got this copy of Wuthering Heights, which I don't work in, although I do work in some old reading books, but this one gets cut up quite a lot. Um, quite a lot, it's absolutely dropping to bits now. But this features in a lot of my journals, but you can use a reading book um, in a really nice way to create a journal as well. But one of the other ways to create um, a book to work in is to make a junk journal and this is one of my favourite ways and this is something I would really recommend as well. Um, because a junk journal is made from collected papers so it's about using lots of things like brown paper, I've got sewing patterns in there, old maps, even things like um, junk mail that comes through the front door. All of those little bits and bobs can be collected and bound together really simply um, to create a little sketchbook of your own. And the nice thing about these is you can add pages as well, so there's no sort of beginning or end to the journal. I'm just trying to find the middle of mine. So you can see I've just punched through the middle of the papers and tied a little knot. So if I undo that knot, I can add more papers in and re-thread it. And it's really simply made as well with a cereal box. So again, as I said before, you don't need anything really specialist to, um, to make one of these pieces. Um, the nice thing as well about a junk journal is that the pages aren't stark white. I know sometimes when you open up a brand new sketchbook, um, a really stark white page can be a little bit off-putting and you might gather all your materials together and you might go to a lovely space to journal and then open up a sketchbook and think, I don't know what to do because the, the white page is pristine and a little bit terrifying and all those ideas that you've had just kind of go out of the window. So using a junk journal is really nice because the white isn't there. You've already got some sort of interest on the pages, which kind of takes the fear away, fear away a little bit of, um, of starting on a really pristine page. I think when something's really white and perfect, you kind of think that whatever goes on there has to be really perfect and you have to get it right first time. And without realising that you put pressure on yourself to make something you know, um, absolutely spot on first time round. So using a junk journal is really nice because you just it, it takes that fear away a little bit. But obviously having the book is just one part of it. You need to have some sort of prompt to get started as well. And that can be often the difficult bit or the off-putting bit as well. We're going to have a little look at a particular prompt, um, which is just an example prompt for journaling. Um, but there are loads of different things that you can use as a, a simple prompt just to get you started on some journaling. 
where do you go to get prompts and inspiration? So a really good place to, um, to find prompts is places like Pinterest. Um, and if you just go to the search bar and type in something like creative journal and prompts or bullet journal prompts, um, you'll get really good starter list um, to work with. But also, if you, you know, if you hear an interesting song lyric that you like, or you read something in a, in a magazine or something, um, or if someone, if, you, if someone says something that you think that's a really interesting quote, it's kind of a process of collecting and writing things down and, and just jotting things down similar um, in the same sort of way that you would do with materials. You can kind of collect little snippets here and there that might eventually feed their way into a journal page. And it's nice to kind of decide at what point you slot that little bit in to a, to a page that you're working on. So I would say as a good starter, um, you could go to somewhere like, like Pinterest, definitely. Um, but in terms of prompts, Sorry, was that, does that answer your question all right, Debs? I was just going to fire away there. That's all right. So a prompt um, can be something quite as simple as a single word. It could be something um, like uh, travel, I am, and you could respond in a really personal way, perhaps, with um, words or images about your identity. Um, I've got a really nice page further in, and the prompt was just circles for this page. So all I was doing here was just playing with circles and just you know, sort of drawing around objects, pushing paint around with my thumb, blending oil pastel in with emulsion and just really moving the sort of, trying to play around with colour, moving around with fingers and just enjoying that kind of playing around with textures. So that's been one of my favourite prompts in this book in particular. And that was taken from something just as simple um, as circles. And I do think as well, if you ever see a prompt that you've found online and you don't know how to get started with it, a little tip sometimes is to find out the dictionary definition of that word and sometimes the dictionary definition written down in a book can also um, start off some ideas as well for just sort of ideas of how to, how to tackle it. So today we're going to look at a prompt um, based around identity and today we're going to build an identity cairn. You might have seen cairns if you're ever out walking and you go to a particular beauty spot and people tend to stack stones up. It's like a marker of a lovely place to stop and enjoy the scenery. The, across cultures, they've got a much more sort of um, historical and spiritual significance, which I found really interesting in the theme of um, identity. So the act of balancing stones carries with it a practice of patience and a physical effort of creating balance. Each rock in the cairn can signify an intention of grace for thankfulness or can be offered up for another in need. They are built to represent balance, peace and patience. So what I'm going to do now is just flip the camera around and I'm going to demonstrate how to go through the various techniques to layer out and build an identity cairn that really um, represents you or someone that you know. There we go. Can you all see that on the camera? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really simple idea. It's just the idea of cutting your stones, if you like, out of different collected papers or magazines and stacking them in a cairn that represents you. So I've got one of mine, my very bottom stone has got scissors on it because I do sew and craft a lot. Um, and then I've got um, the coastal scene just underneath it because I do like to sort of walk and travel. There's more buttons in there. There's a reference to sort of um, Shields where I used to live and the food is at the very top because I do quite like to sort of enjoy myself in restaurants and things. So there's lots of different ways to stack this up. So this is a really literal one. This is just kind of all the little bits that might make up sort of the things I like or my personality. The nice thing about these junk journals as well is that you don't always feel like you have to start on the first page. Start two or three pages in if you want to. Um, I know we talked a little bit earlier on about the fear of a white page and that can be quite off-putting sometimes. I also think the first page can be quite off-putting because similar to using a white page, you think the first page should be you know, really spot on and perfect because it's the first thing that you see when you open your book. And if you find that stop and you just turn two or three pages in and start somewhere in the middle, again it just takes the pressure off so that you actually enjoy a bit of time to yourself doing some creative journaling instead of worrying that you're not doing something the way you perhaps think it should be done. Um, it really is more about enjoying and exploring and just playing with media um, than, you know, creating something that looks absolutely perfect or that anyone has to see. It really is just for you and it's just a place for you to kind of explore and enjoy. So when I approach journal pages, even though we've got these lovely junk journal pages that have already got a bit of colour on them or a bit of texture or printed interest on them, I still like to put a bit of a ground down because again, for me, it just helps me kind of tackle the page. Um, it, it kind of helps to loosen up a little bit or warm up even. I always say that you wouldn't sing in a choir without warming your vocal cords up and you wouldn't run a race without sort of warming yourself up 
your muscles or going for a jog. So don't expect to do something creative and just jump straight into it. Just have a little play with media first of all and enjoy it before you feel like you've got to um, add something on top of it. So I like to start by creating grounds and you can see I've just got an old store card, like one of those reward cards. So I just splat some emotion down and just enjoy kind of playing with it, pull it across the page, scratch into it, see if you can create some textures. Okay, and there's no right or wrong way of doing it, it's just a nice way to explore a bit of media and put a ground down as well. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of white emulsion on there. You can also do things like, um, if you've got things like bubble wrap, if you paint that with white emulsion, then you can stamp and put textures into your book as well, so you can start building up really nice tactile textures in your book too. So once you've got a little ground down in your book, um, it's time to start thinking about building your cairn. So if you collect a little pile of collected papers, I'm really fond of using things like old books, as I mentioned before, when you saw the really tatty copy of Wuthering Heights. Um, I've got a picture of a dog there, because we've, we've always kept dogs. And there's lots of sort of textile references and colour and things there. So just the, the, the sort of images and colours and textures that really stood out to me when I was flicking through magazines and books at home. And it's from those that I'm going to cut out um, the stones for my cairn. And you don't need a template for this either. You can just, it can be quite random. That's, that's quite the nice sort of thing about it. You can just enjoy cutting the pieces out, laying them down, arranging them, seeing how they look change your mind, do it again, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no time pressure on this, you can just enjoy the laying out and the piecing together as much as the kind of the, the decorating and adding to the page. So I'm just going to do maybe, maybe four or five of my stones. They don't have to go straight up in a perfect pile. If you actually see real cairns, it's a real, it is a real balancing act, so you can have things going off to the left and right just to create that sort of interest. And you can see very quickly, with just a couple of techniques, you can build something up that's a good base in your sketchbook. Once those are glued down, you then might want to start adding some text on that as well. Um, and I've put in sort of words in there like sewing, creating, reading, um, love local, dog walker. But it's words that kind of reflect um, like my personality and my interest perhaps. So, and, so if you were doing one of your own, you might want to put in um, perhaps some words that maybe um, reflect your personality. You might want to um, add in some words that perhaps reflect your role as carer or your feelings as, as carer. You know, if this is your journal, it's your place to kind of explore those feelings and write things down. Um, and you can also write them in the stones as well. And as I said before, um, this could be a cairn that you build for yourself and for sort of your thoughts and feelings or it could be a cairn that you build for somebody else so perhaps somebody that you do spend a lot of time with someone perhaps that you care for and you might want to build a cairn for them this is the first cairn that i've done uh, all i've done is started to do a little tower so far of the cairn itself mm -hmm. so i'm just contemplating now what to put on it um i think i'm probably going to do it about myself and all the, all that i think i am but all, all the different roles that I have and different influences on me and the different things which obviously that's kind of neatly balancing or one on top of the other and sometimes you feel as an individual that everything is quite precariously balanced and mm. that it can all come tumbling down if you're not careful. Um, so mine's going to be about how I manage the different um, stresses and strains and the demands on me with the different hats I wear, etc. Yeah, yeah, yes. Are you going to have yourself as a sort of base stone as well, do you think? I think essentially the tower is me. The second one up, you know, in flower, went completely out the shops. Nobody had any, nobody had any flower, nobody had any yeast. Yeah. Well, I, I do quite a bit of um, bread making because we've got a bread machine and happen to have quite a significant amount of flour actually, <laughs> and yeast. And so, the fact that these all go out of date on the 27th of February 21 is quite significant because this is lockdown flower. So for me this is quite special to collage with these materials because it's got meaning for me. So the, the barcode that's on there is the one that I just chopped off the flower bag. Yeah. Um, I've got about four or five of these strong white red flower um, bags that I'm going to basically be eating into, excuse the pun, um, <laughs> for my collage and things going forward because it's lockdown flower. It's oh, a, that's lovely. It is, it really is.
It's amazing as well, isn't it? How you can just find something like really householdy, and but it's got a lovely pattern on it as well. Because when you, you you take sort of you take it out of the bread flour bag, it's just a beautifully patterned piece of paper. But it's actually yeah. it's it's you who knows that little meaning behind it in your journal. While you're working away, I just thought I'd show you another little really quick technique. You need a magazine image. It really specifically has to be from something like a glossy magazine, not a computer printout, because it won't work quite the same way. Um, and what you need to do is cover your image with sellotape. And when you put each strip down, overlap them ever so slightly, because eventually we're going to remove this image and we don't want the sellotape to fall apart when we remove the image. If you've got a jar of clean water, you're going to work on the back of the image, just the sellotape image on one side, turn it over and then just wet your finger, hold it down because it will move quite a lot and you're just going to have to rub the image away. So once you've got your transfer, that's another image that you can use in your journal. Um, just instead of collage and something out of a magazine, it's a nice way to have a different quality to an image. It's got a different sort of feel to it, a different texture, it's a little bit shiny on one side, a little bit matte on the other. And you can use these in your journal by adding them to a page and then adding words around them. So that's the one I did on taking time to relax with the, the sleepy seal pup, which is quite sweet. And then there's another one on this front page and that's two people on horses on the horizon. And that page was just about safe travel. That was sort of uh, the sort of the, the longing for an adventure. But you can just see the shiny side there. That's the sellotape. Um, and that's just a nice way to add an image with a different sort of textural quality, if you like, to your pages. This is the one I did originally, um, and it's just entitled This Is Me. Um, the bottom is a map, and it's um, the heart on the map. It's very tiny, but that's actually where I live. Um, and then it's just things that I like. Um, blueberries are my favourite fruit. Um, I love to walk in the rain, specifically very heavy rain. And then music and books are very, very important to me. Um, keep me sane. So that was the This Is Me. This is just the start, it's a work in progress. Um, it's going to be about my dad and about his daft qualities that <laughs> everybody loves and sometimes, as his carer, drives me up the wall. <laughs> Love of the bits. Um, everybody loves him, he's got such a smile. So I've got, I'm going to have game for a laugh, adventure, and then I've got a one with a new smile, and then I'm just going to fill the background in. Um, about yes, these are his great ac um, things that everybody loves, characteristics. Um, but he's also stubborn as a mule, even though he's 88, he still thinks he's 12. <laughs> and just basically celebrate dad as a um, kind of a newbie to uh, creative journaling. Um, although I have been very creative in the past. This was all new to me, um, and the bit I really loved the most about the junk journal aspect of it was um, the ability to be not worried about making a mistake. Um, it's, it's all about play for me, it's all about having uh, an, a couple of hours to myself up in, in my craft room, knowing that um, I care for my dad, he stays downstairs. If he needs me, he can shout. Um, and this is my time, my me time, that I relax, I can write things down that, I'm, that are going around in my head. And once they're on the page, I can forget about them. Um, I use my journal particularly to write positive quotes and song lyrics that I've heard that I like um, but it's nice to go somewhere where you can be undisturbed um, even if it's just for an hour that's your you time so tell people that um, I'm just going to be upstairs or in whatever space that you choose um, and that you can just be quiet or have some music on in the background and just enjoy. I, I can close this craft room door and I can go back to being the carer and doing everything that that involves. Mm -hmm. But in here, in this space, I can just let off steam. 
Yeah. If I need to and relax and have fun 